pipeline is on Inlet Drive, and it's on this road right here. Mary Hatch hopes her story about living next to an oil pipeline will make people think hard about who they vote for this election. It spurts out a lot of oil. It does. And, and you it know carries this? a lot of oil. And I know this because in um, 2007, my house was sprayed with oil. Eight years ago, a backhoe operator following an outdated map caused a major rupture in Kinder Morgan's Trans Mountain Pipeline. The handrails, the car, everywhere was covered with oil. And I was just in shock. It was a surreal moment. It shatters your sense of safety uh, for your home and your, your neighborhood, your children, and your, your health as well. Living through that has turned Hatch and other Burnaby residents into anti-pipeline activists fighting Kinder Morgan's plan to triple the capacity of its existing pipeline. The reality is there will be a fire. Something will happen at some time. It's the lives that'll be lost. And it's not just the people on the land, it's that whole ocean out there that, that we're looking at to be devastated. Pipeline advocates call that kind of talk alarmist, pointing out that Kinder Morgan has safely moved oil through Vancouver for 50 years, aside from that single incident. Still, given the potential environmental risks of new pipelines, the issue could be a clincher in many ridings. The Green Party stance is unequivocal. No to the Kinder Morgan pipeline, but also no to the Northern Gateway, the Keystone XL pipeline, and Energy East 2. The Conservative Party is the most open to new heavy oil pipelines, with a yes, in principle, to all of those assuming they pass the regulatory hurdles. Thank you very much for being here. The Liberals and NDP are harder to pin down. What we need from our government is to establish a clear and responsible process. Justin Trudeau emphasizes an improved regulatory process, and Thomas Mulcair, while opposing the Northern Gateway, is trying to keep his options with Kinder Morgan's project open. Opposing these pipelines systematically in advance is just as wrong as supporting so you, them. For Mary Hatch and other New Democrats who've been fighting the Kinder Morgan expansion, Mulcair's fence straddling is a big disappointment. Does it bother you that Mulcair has not uh, said no to Kinder Morgan? You bet it bothers me. Maybe they're looking at what happened in the last provincial election when, um, what was his name? Adrian Dix. Adrian, Adrian Dix. Dix came out against the pipeline and look what happened. Adrian Dix is BC's former NDP leader, and his story offers a cautionary tale to all parties. I don't think that the port of, Van of Metro Vancouver, as busy a port as it is, should become a major oil export port. In the midst of an election two years ago, Dix suddenly came out hard against Kinder Morgan. The move won over some green supporters, but a lot of others saw the flip-flop as opportunistic and anti-industry. Dix blew an election that seemed like a sure thing. One takeaway is that while British Columbians value the environment, they also want well-paying resource industry jobs too. Burnaby Mountain may well be the epicenter for resistance against pipelines, but once you get away from the coast to the interior, you'll find a lot of people tell you what they want is a balanced approach. So we've come here, to just outside Kelowna. We know that on the rock chuck, the loader... This is the Interior Heavy Equipment Operator School in the community of Lake Country. Get your cards ready. Don't forget to meet up with your instructor when you get your key. IHE is training the next generation of earth movers, the mining, construction and pipeline builders of tomorrow. It's like a big uh, sandbox playtime. Shane Edwards is 30, from Chilliwack, and he won't support any party that unequivocally opposes pipelines. The environment's important to all of us, especially here in BC. We love going out in the lakes and rivers and everything, but we also depend on it, the oil for our jobs. We can't say no to oil yet. Our natural resources are definitely one of the main parts of our economy. Katrina Smith has just graduated with her operator certificate and she doesn't want this election to close any potential career paths. Being in the school has definitely opened up my eyes into what I'm going to want from my government in regards to my own future. To be able to have the jobs, I like the industry, I really do, but I also like the idea of keeping BC green. So it's to find a balance between that. The Greens stance seems to be going over well on Vancouver Island where support appears up. But just about everywhere else in BC, the political calculation this election seems to be that there are more voters like Katrina Schmidt than Mary Hatch. They're, they can be kind of short-sighted and think of just immediately what they might 
uh, benefit from, but they don't look at the long-term costs. Political parties have learned that opposing oil pipelines in this province comes with as many political risks as supporting them. Chris Brown, CBC News, Burnaby.